I'm here to talk about a topic that we're all familiar with, yet we try to push it to the back of our minds. Every year, there are 433,648 sexual assault victims over the age of 12. According to Rain.org, 90% of those victims are female. It may seem like it might ever happen to you or anyone that you know. Chances are that it already has. With rape being prevalent in places not only like prisons, it can happen in the comfort of your own home. In the year 1998 alone, 17.7 million women stepped forward saying that they were a victim of rape. In that same year, 2.78 million men also stepped forward saying that they were involved in unwanted sexual contact. It could happen to anybody. It could be a coworker, a friend that couldn't take no for an answer, a complete stranger, a family member, but it needs to end now. Today I'm up here to tell you about the statistics and how common it is in hopes to dwindle those numbers down a little bit and also to tell you about a woman that stepped forward in uh, supporting these victims of sexual assault and helping give them a voice to be heard. That woman's name is Tarana Burke and she started a movement called Me Too. Now I know you all may be thinking, you know, how is starting a movement really going to help us make a change? The first step of making a change is recognizing that there's a problem. These numbers right here tell you there's clearly an issue. So Toretta herself has long stood st with her fellow females. She originally started a nonprofit organization called Just Inc., which helps stand with the women of uh, the African American uh, women in ensuring their well being and their safety. That's where she originally coined the phrase Me Too, which has then been altered to not only stand with the African American community, but to stand with all of her fellow females in support of unwanted sexual contact. So in, even in her biography on biography.com, Tarana herself reveals that she was a victim not to, uh, a sexual assault not once, not twice, but three times. She wanted to be known that we hear you, we see you, and we want to change. And the first step to recognizing the change, is to, or the first step to making a difference is recognizing that there needs to be that change. This movement really hit the spotlight October 15th in 2017 when Alyssa Milano put out this tweet. She said, if you've ever been sexually harassed or assaulted, write me too as a reply to this tweet. To her surprise, overnight, the post was flooded with over 12 million responses, according to New York Times. People responded on social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, and so forth, finally giving these victims a voice to be heard and putting their word out there. Now, although Alyssa's intent was very pure and she just wanted to give these people a voice, Tarana felt like her life's work had been kind of altered into something she hadn't originally intended for it to be. She felt like her term, Me Too, has now been moved into something that she didn't initially mean for it to mean. Since then, Alyssa has gone on air to help rectify this misunderstanding. She said that she just wanted to put the focus back on the victims. She wanted them to recognize that these people had a voice and that they are able to speak and they're not going to be judged for it. Tarana now sees it as bigger than just the two of them. She recognizes that this is a movement that can help support everybody. So she and emphasizes that the importance of being able to let everyone's voice really be heard. This movement works through empowerment through empathy. Because although it could just be a one-time event, the effects of the trauma last you a lifetime. Many people suffer through depression after these traumas. They turn towards hard drugs to try to numb the effects. And according to Rain.org, 30% of them show symptoms of PTSD even 90 days after the attack. And over 33% of those victims also contemplate suicide. The victims are 10 times more likely to try hard drugs like heroin, methamphetamines, and so forth to try to cover, <laughs> to try to um, numb the effects of what had happened to them in their life. With not only that being an issue, an estimated of 7,750 to 12,500 births every year are a result of rape. So not only are you now stuck with that, that constant memory of what had happened, but you also have a constant reminder that's always with you about, uh, of that day. 
Whether you see this child as a blessing or a curse, the way this child was conceived is now you'll always have that somewhat of a resentment towards them, creating a cycle of self-hatred, self-loathing, and regret. Um, with the support of the community and courage to step forward, we hope that by giving the people the voice, it'll discourage people to feel like they're comfortable enough to do these acts. By being able to give them a voice and make them more comfortable and have, being able to talk to the people and putting people on blast, I feel like people are going to be able, people will think twice before doing something that they wouldn't want done to themselves. So how can you make a difference? Do you have an experience to tell? Sometimes being that shorter to cry on, that ear to listen to, or just showing that person that you are there for them is the most important thing that you can do for somebody. We all have been through, we've all suffered through traumas, and we all have our different mechanisms on how to cope with them. But without the support of your community and doing this alone, it's way harder. So let's take a stand, let's make a difference, and let's help dwindle those numbers down, and let's make this a non-existent problem anymore.